Edge. Hi, chat. Oh, oh, oh. Hi, chat. <laughs> Can you hear us? Hey, I hope this is working, man. I, I okay. <laughs> Uh, so we we just we're gonna start the sh the podcast proper in just a minute, uh, but I we just want to make sure that the levels are okay for everyone. First off, this is me talking. Do I sound okay? Um, and then Heather and Matt, do you both want to talk a little bit? Check check check. This is hello. me talking. Hello, uh, hello. Sibilance. 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 Great. Are the levels good? Everyone sound all right. Great. And then uh, and then real quick, let me know if this blows out your eardrums. I'm gonna play this little oh good sting. How was that? Wags is a tad low. Okay, I can go up a little bit. That was loud as shit. Okay. <laughs> okay, I apologize. I thought it was, I thought it was fine. To me, it well, was fine. It sounded fine to you guys, but it's just the way that 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 this you know captures the way the OBS captures my desktop audio. It's gonna be balanced differently. Let me try it a little bit quieter. How about something like this? That's not a good cue. This is a better cue. That's very quiet. That's Florida, quiet for you guys. Nice. And we're the stars. We'll split we'll split the difference. We'll split the difference and that's what we're gonna do. Here, one more time. How's that? That was as the Italians say, molto bene. Perfect. We're getting perfecto. We're getting molto bene molto bene from, from Matt. Perfect. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna duck away for one second. We're gonna come back and we're gonna do the podcast. So everyone just hit, just uh, just uh, sit, sit pretty for a second. We'll be right back. And thank you all for joining us. What a treat! What an absolute yeah. treat! Nick, someone asked you to split their difference. The fuck does that mean? I don't know. Sounds horny as shit. <laughs> everyone, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, let's uh, let's uh, let's duck out real quick. We'll be right back. All right. All right. We need.
it's the game of the year awards here on get played the podcast the premiere video game podcast and we're here on the red carpet as the as the game characters are coming in everybody's here it's a who's who of of video gaming gamers and characters like look right over there we got we got kratos kratos is wearing it looks like the front half of a lamb uh hey kratos hey kratos you got anything to say for entertain e for e death can have me when it earns me that's kratos everybody he's he's here Oh, we look over there. The... We see a cardboard box in motion. That must I, that be, can that only... ha has to be Solid Snake himself. Wow. Solid Snake wearing a cardboard box to the Game Awards for, I believe that's 15 years in a row. 15 years, the cardboard box. Hey, hey, there's one I recognize. It's, it's Joel from The Last of Us. Hey, hey, Joel. Hey, Joel. Come on. Come on over to the camera. Come on Hello. over. Hi, Joel. This is, Joel. I found one of the, uh, were you looking for this? It's one of these comic books that Ellie's reading. Uh, See, I, uh, I'm familiar I with the concept uh, of a comic book. <laughs> what the strange. hell even is this thing? Yeah. It's, a, it's a comic book. They were around before the world ended. Oh, um, wow, look over there. Look over there. It's Chris Pratt Mario. Oh, my goodness. Great to see you, Chris Pratt Mario. It's Chris, Chris Pratt Mario. Hey, hey. Why don't you give us one of Mario's famous catchphrases from... It's, it's a me, Mario. I'm going to the Mushroom Kingdom. That's that it. That really good. That was that was good. That makes me excited to see the movie. Almost Luigi as excited is my as dad. I am. What? Mm. <laughs> Wait, what? Luigi is, is that, my dad. Is that right? canonical? That's, is that true? I, think I don't... That's, I think Luigi is my dad. I think so. Uh, thank you, Chris. Uh... You know, peace be with you or whatever, and uh, yes, peace uh, good, be with good you. <laughs> good luck to you. Uh, wait, hey, hey, over there, it's uh, it's a Tetris piece. Hey, what's hi Tetris piece? What do you? It looks like you you're move, wearing move 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 <laughs> move. Yep, yep. Move. Very very good, very <sighs> good. You're fitting in with the rest of the crowd. Ah, <sighs> wow. The stars are out tonight. The folks. stars are out. To oh, look over there. It's former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. Why is he here? I don't know. Yes. How dare How you, he sir, still alive? show your face here. It's I on just, site with Henry I Kissinger. I just as want as to concerned. say that the West will rise. What? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, no. I don't. Henry? Why won't that guy die? Yeah. I don't know. He's a bad. He straight up won't. <laughs> He just is a he is a Metal Gear villain at yeah. this point. <laughs> oh look, it's Cubert uh, and Josh Gad. Oh my God, they're fucking getting it on. That's inappropriate. Josh Gad is fucking Cubert in the nose right here on the red carpet. You you came for the Get Played Game Awards, and that's what you're gonna get. Cubert getting face fucked right on the red carpet, and Henry Kissinger. <laughs> we name our favorite gaming experiences of the past year and the chat tells us why we're wrong on our 2022 game of the year special this week on get played Wow. Wow. Thank you wow. so much for that, Devin. Welcome to Get Played, your one-stop show for good games, bad games, and every game in between. It's time to get played. I'm your host, Heather Ann Campbell, along with my fellow host, Nick Weiger. That's me, Nick Weiger. I'm here with my fellow host, Matt Apodaca. 
<laughs> Do they want me to say it? I I feel like this this is going to read well here on the Twitch live stream, but yes. make no sense at all when this is a. Uh, Do they want me to say it? <laughs> <laughs> Matt is waving his hands behind his ears. Hulk Hogan style. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I should be doing that. Maybe not. Uh, <laughs> Hello, kissing. everyone. Hello, everyone. And welcome back to the premiere video game podcast where we're doing a special live episode on Twitch and uh, then releasing this episode for all of you audio files later on in the year. That's right. Yeah. I don't this, know when. This will be out next Monday. So, like, if you're listening to this, we had just, if you're watching the live stream, this will be out in the main feed next Monday. If you're listening to this in the podcast feed, uh, this was recorded this prior, prior Tuesday. Um, and, hey, while we're at the top of the show um, doing stuff that's going to read better for the live stream audience, uh, I just want to update my stats real quick. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. And there we go. Let's put on these bicycle gloves. All right. All right. I'm ready to do the show um, after I smoke six cigarettes. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, we've got a- You have all this stuff. Nick, wait, yeah. wait, Nick. Are you disco Elysium Elysiuming? Is yeah, that what's happening? I put on a, I put on this, uh, this, this, I was like, oh, maybe I'll put on a suit. Uh, Cause we're doing the, the, you know, we're doing this, these uh, game of the year awards. And then as I was doing it, I realized I was inadvertently doing Harrier Dubois cosplay. So I just decided to double down. <laughs> looks, uh, it looks like your regular clothes that you record. <laughs> I'm wearing a, a suit and tie. I'm wearing a, I'm wearing bicycle gloves, uh, a, uh, a uh, toboggan. What do you call these? A skull beanie? cap, a beanie, and uh, and pink sunglasses for anyone. Uh, like a like language. a pom pom beanie. Yeah, Would like a pom pom be? beanie. Yeah, pom pom beanie. Great. Uh, uh, all right. Yeah. Plus ten drama. The chat is saying. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Let's uh look. Uh, 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 we're very excited to be doing the show live on Twitch. Very very excited to see all of you uh, here today in the chat. And uh, thanks to all of you for supporting the show, for joining the show. I do have an announcement that I want to make as I take off some of this gear for my own comfort. Um, and all three of us discussed this for the record. And so we're kind of doing this more than anything because we can. At a certain point during the show tonight, you're going to get Luigi'd. And, okay, Nick said that we agreed to this? Yes. I was the lone no. I said, we can't do this to the fans. We can't do this to the viewing audience. They, they're they tuning in with their own eyes. Yeah. They're de they're giving, they could be watching TV right now. They, they're tuning in to watch us, and we're going to Luigi them? We're gonna Luigi them, yeah. I mean, Matt, you you were overruled. It's majority rules. It was two hey, to one. and that's fair, and I yeah. respect that. So that, at the very least, look, there is that. Like, maybe some of you are excited about that. Maybe some of you are dreading it. But by being here, just you accept, you understand that you are going to be Luigi'd at a certain point. You don't know what it's coming, but you know it's coming. And because I, you know, lost out in the mm -hmm. vote, I also have to say those are the rules and if you don't respect them get the fuck out of here <laughs> that should become your new catchphrase for 2023 get the fuck out of here <laughs> maybe i'll uh maybe i'll give it a try let's get some can we can we get a uh, earwolf to print some get the fuck out of here merch yeah i think i could i could swing that you you get the fuck out of here oh my, oh my god. god let's talk about some video games we're playing right now it's what are you playing resident evil merchant Ooh, what are you playing? Are you okay? Yeah. I've been I've been hung over for eight days now. From, oh my god! Uh, from uh from this last weekend's excursions. Excursions, you called them. That's quite the from best. last days. weekend. Yeah, I've, I've eight gone, days have not passed. What, what day is today? It's Tuesday right now. I've been here. I've been hung over for a month. Okay. What? I what mean, are you playing? Are are you doing all right? Because you seem to be no. spiraling. Each week it seems to be bleaker and bleaker. Uh, well, I've got a house now. Oh, good for Not you. Not mine. Okay. Uh, are you like frogging? It, huh? Are you frogging? I think that's what it's called. When you like... <sighs> 
when you like live in like the walls or like the crawl space of somebody's house without oh, them no, knowing. No, no, no. I'm I'm, I'm living it in the, the oh, regular parts of the house. Oh. Just the family's not there anymore. If you know what I mean. I'm going to choose to believe that they abandoned the house or moved out. I don't want to. Do you know that you can. The you, fact. If you walk into any house with your penis out, you get to claim ownership of the house when they leave. I don't think that's legally binding. No. I think, honestly, you, you, you committed a crime. They probably fled because they were scared. Because in addition to you having your dick out, you were just, you're just fucking weird. And creepy. Can I? This outfit's hotter than I expected. <laughs> then you ex you your everyday clothes. Yeah, I, I will when I'm not. What I have to? You can't walk into a store like this. I mean, you could for like two months at the beginning of COVID. Nobody batted an eye, but now it's like everybody has these new rules about masks and. You, you, you draw Ooh. the attention that you don't want. I would think more than anyone, you would maybe be aware of the consequences of a plague that spirals out of control and perhaps be less skeptical of mask mandates than you appear to be. Because because I have cannot, because I have La Plaga. Well, I mean, you know, it, it wants to go come around and say it, but. Well, I have it. Oh, boy. What? What STDs do you have, Nick Weiger? We don't got time. It's an STD? What are you fucking? <laughs> Jesus Christ. You know the answer to that. What? It's an anime Apples. body pillow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, so wait. So, Merchant, you have yes. La Plaga like everybody else in the, in the town in Resident Evil 4? Yeah, but I have, I'm immune. I'm just a carrier. Okay, so you're a carrier of it. You've used that opportunity to sell your wares in this yeah. little area. If you're a if you're a bug chaser, come get La Plaga. Jesus yeah, Christ! I, <laughs> what? Ah, uh, what are you? What are you saying? Well, uh, we I guess we should field your question, uh, Merchant, and and what are you let you, let you get out of here because it seems like you're probably in being pursued by law enforcement. And I you... woke up with a roach crawling out of my ear. Jesus Christ! All well, right. Well... Do, you, do you know it? What like it was just crawling near your ear? You felt it actually burrowing out of your ear, like it'd been living it, inside it, your skull. I felt I felt it crawl out. Um, I mean, it, I don't even know hurt. how to diagnose that. It hurt. Jesus. All right. Wait. What are you playing? Well, uh, Matt, why don't I let you start? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, no, let's, uh, let's, Heather, why don't you go? Heather, where did Heather go? <laughs> I have will be back. She's, oh. she's, she's terrified. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I know how you got into the house. Um, I, I'll say. Look so out. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> what, what are I you think... playing? Both of you. What are you playing? I'm Matt, playing. I'm playing God of War Ragnarok, and of you are. I had um, I had a nice weekend with that, and I feel like there's not that much I can really say about it. Still, like uh, as far as like story and like plot goes and stuff, I don't want anyone to be spoiled, you know. Um, but just like to repeat what I said about it last week. Yeah. It's it's just it's astounding like how gorgeous it is, how well it plays. Um just the surprises in the game in and of itself is like I don't it's the fact that so many different types of games can exist on different spectrums of quality is it's 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 great. Video games are the best. It's, they're so good. Um, just the performance, the performances in it are incredible. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy that they got, uh, Sonny and, um, Christopher Judge back. Um, the guy, there's a guy from the West Wing in it that I have. Oh no... yes. I've heard about this. He plays um, like Odin, right? Yeah. And he's is, fucking is awesome. Richard Schiff. Is that the actor? Yes. Yes. So, so on the, I think uh, on the good doctor. He's great. He's so good. Uh, the game is like kind of funny too. Like there's like good jokes in it. And I was like, oh, this is it's it's fun. Um, 
I, I can't wait for you guys to play it. It's it's so so good. Um, I I love it. It's my favorite. It's my favorite. How is the combat? The combat is really really satisfying. And I was saying this a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Um, I think playing Elden Ring really prepared me like more so than God of War twenty eighteen did because like uh -huh. I'm I'm doing stuff in here that I'm like shocked that I'm able to do. Like just like with my own dexterity, I was like, I'm dodging stuff. I'm parrying. I'd never parried a single time in Elden Ring. Wow, wow. And I'm parrying in this game like it's like like my job. Uh, and not every time I'm missing them quite a bit too. So you know, not unlike doing my job where sometimes I do a good job and sometimes I'm bad at it. Um, but it's it, the combat's so good. The weapons, like I don't, I, I feel like the way you can transition between weapons now is so great. Um, the, the, the one thing that I, I, I'm often confused by in many games is different menus. Uh -huh. There's so many menus in this game and there's so many like upgrades and things you can do. And I'm just like, I just everybody relax. Yeah. I don't need to be seeing all this. Uh, just give me a better weapon or something. Matt, I feel obligated to inform you that the, uh, the chat is referring to you as Matthew Perry. That's honestly Perry. really good. Yeah. That's pretty great. <laughs> That's awesome. That's pretty great. <clears throat> Could there be a more fitting nickname? Oh, he's fucking on it. And this is why he's the king. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I'm glad you're having fun with it. I can't wait to spend some time with this game probably in 2024 when I get through the rest of my fucking backlog. Uh, but it looks fucking. It, yeah. it, it, everything I've heard is just emphatic praise. The 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 detractions I've heard of ju are just like it's maybe more of the same of the first game. But then again, I don't really mind that. Yeah, it's good. If you yeah. liked the first one, you're gonna love this because it's not that different, but it's bigger and 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 better. I think in a lot of ways. Well, there you go. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about you know because the main the main thing I'm doing, and uh, I should I should have made this announcement earlier, but I'll reiterate this later in the show. We are doing our final new episode of the of the year next year. Next year. Next week. Next week. God Nick. damn it. The you final new episode him. of the year will be next week, not next year. That wouldn't make any sense at all, would it? Uh, next week, we're going to be doing our Persona 5 Royal, uh, We Play, You Play. So the bulk of my hours have been spent with Persona 5 Royal. I'll, I'll just real quick say, I'll save my thoughts on that game, but I'll real quick say, one of the most satisfying feelings in gaming is when you are ascending or descending a spiral staircase and you just have that perfect point where the camera, you're getting the ca the 3D camera to track you. Uh, that's so, yeah. so satisfying when you can just absolutely nail that when you, fi you find yourself in that sweet spot um, and playing Marvel Snap. But I'm going to talk instead about Dwarf Fortress, Ooh. which inexplicably, r like the most inexplicable release date of the year, Dwarf Fortress Steam Edition came out today. I don't know why they released this for the holidays. Maybe it just happened to be done right now. It doesn't feel like a big holiday title. It feels like a more indie thing. Uh, that, you know, maybe could have come out elsewhere in the year, but I'm not going to second guess them because it's a fucking amazing thing that I've never mm. really gotten into, partly because of the ASCII art that it has. And now is it ASCII or ASCII? ASCII. ASCII or ASCII? A-S-C-I-I. -I. Anyway, it's I think it's that's like GIF or JIF. Yeah, it's it's basically using, uh, the chat is saying ASCII. ASCII. Um, so there is a, there are a bunch of, you know, so so like the the ASCII art, it's just like if you're not familiar with that term, it's just characters basically. It's just like alphanumeric characters to represent things graphically. This actually has pixel art, has tile based art. Um, and if you don't know any about anything about this game, I just recommend like googling it a little bit and or binging it, whatever your preferred search engine is, and finding some you know in some context about. Uh, what exactly you're in for before playing it, certainly before spending the $30 for this version. Uh, I'm going to try to stream this later. I've, I haven't spent a lot of time with it, uh, but it is like the most inscrutable game ever made. It's just got <laughs> way too fucking much going on, way too much depth. You'll like, you have like, you know, when I've, when I've uh, watched playthroughs or read about playthroughs or, you know, played some on my own in the past, it's just like, you, it, it gets so so detailed so granular to the point where like you're understanding um uh, uh you know the personal histories and uh uh you know like uh, uh, professions and ailments of like individual dwarves and also just like 
what can happen there's so many you know it's all procedurally generated and and, and run based and so many fucking things can happen that it gets just absolutely overwhelming in the amount of detail it has uh so i can't wait to uh to, to spend more time with it but I just think it's really cool that they did a graphical release of this game. It's also one of those games where it's like, it's really cool that, that it exists because it's basically a labor of love from two guys, uh, Tarn Adams and Zach Adams, who I believe are brothers and are just extremely, you know, uh, it, like I've been working on this game for like 20 years and wow. just keep adding content. And it has a very, very, uh, you know, dedicated, uh, rabidly uh, fanatical community. Um, and hopefully that will grow uh, with this uh, much more approachable release of the game. So anyway, uh, that's it. Dwarf Fortress. That's what's on my radar. Uh, Heather, what are you playing? Well, it's a big, it was a big week, guys. It's a big <laughs> week. So, you know, a, a couple months ago, I got hooked on this little game called Fortnite. And I'd never been present for any of the like, chapter switches like the big in-game events and sure enough uh this week the island that i had grown accustomed to playing on was destroyed in an wow. in-game event wow and then reassembled by brie larson uh who sacrificed herself i guess for the pen the little pinata donkey that's uh, yeah she's dead she's dead uh she, she, she in a cinematic brie larson's like i gave everything i had to the island and now i give it to you and she like jumps into like light wow uh and dies and so i don't know what her character was i just know that it was brie larson yeah. and then uh the island was reformed uh, as an entirely new playable island with a totally new theme. And the theme is sort of medieval because the Witcher, the the Geralt from the yeah. Witcher, is that his fucking name? Mm -hmm. uh, he is the new playable character in this season of, this upcoming season of Fortnite. Cool. So there's a lot of like knights. There's a lot of like castles. Uh, there's tons of motorcycles now, which are the in-game yeah. equivalent of horses. Like you ride them and you can shoot out of, off the fucking, it's a little bit like riding a horse in another video game. Um, and it's, uh, and there's a new weapon that's a hammer. That's a giant hammer. And when you hit the ground, it throws you. And if you hit somebody else, it throws them. And it's an incredible game mechanic. I, uh, finished a script uh, a couple days ago and was Congrats. so grateful for the time to play Fortnite. <laughs> I, I've i been playing nonstop. I have yet to... Well, I got... No, I got a couple of Victory Royales since the season switched, but I have yet to, like, really make a habit of it because the new weapons and new territory is... It, it takes some adjustment. Right. Um, There's also... uh personalized upgrades one of my complaints pre previous to this was that there wasn't like a final fantasy first soldier style like job system right like you couldn't be like oh i can see in the dark better or i can jump farther or whatever now every time the storm changes size and constricts you get the opportunity to choose an upgrade wow. and those upgrades are a, an enormous list of random upgrades so you can kind of create specialized characters for example you can jump higher uh like you can take mm. less fall damage uh you can choose to be able to deploy your hang glider at any time so you can completely eliminate fall damage um you can choose weapon upgrades. You can choose to have weapons delivered to you. You can choose to have ammo recharge. So it makes it more specific to each time you play. And it's fucking great. The game is so fucking good. I uh, Zach for attack four in the chat or Zach attack four uh, in the chat is, is pointing out something that you also told us off stream, Heather, which is that it's using uh, unreal engine 5.1. Yeah. It also like I, I don't want to believe that the world is sort of a simulation for my single player benefit, mm -hmm. but it is kind of wild that weeks after I start playing Fortnite, all the Rick and Morty skins come back and then the game gets multiple new modes that I've been complaining about and 
a new island and a massive graphic overhaul. It's it looks gorgeous. Like if you if you have seen Fortnite screenshots before and you're like, Ugh, this looks like a game that sucks. Now it's gorgeous. Wow. Real time reflections all the way down to like the side view mirrors on your car. Like if you're driving a car, the little mirror in the corner has real time reflections. There's lumen lighting. It's wow. wow. Fucking ridiculous. Um, well, congrats on being the protagonist of reality. That's huge for you. It's it, that's great. I, yeah, I guess. I guess that's pretty fun. It's horrible. Hey, it's protagonists your world. We're just also have setbacks and suck. Yeah, I'd rather just be. I am a normal. I'm just happy to be a major NPC in this quest line. Hmm. <laughs> major, <laughs> interesting. I think I'm pretty major. Heather sees me every week, a couple of times. Yeah, if if I was the protagonist of reality and I was seeing Nick every week, he'd definitely he'd be like <laughs> he'd be like the uh the dog in Skyrim. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Was that dog's name Meat or something? Are you thinking of dog meat from Fallout? Yeah, is that what Heather just said? No, she I don't know. Skyrim. I was talking about Skyrim. Oh. And and the truth is I don't even know if there is a dog in Skyrim. I went along with it, but uh, I don't. I don't know. I think it's just a dog. I, I was just wrong in front of all of our friends. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be careful with that. Friends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm humiliated. There is a talking dog in Fort in in Skyrim. Okay. A talking dog. So Skyrim is a good game, right? <laughs> people love Skyrim. I spent people a little bit of time with Skyrim. it, but I haven't. But you know, it's it's one of those games that people got super obsessed with. I just feel like everything played, I hear about it, it I've never. I've never really played it, but everything I hear about it sounds fake. It's the I, kind of game that if you like that kind of single player open world experience, you can just play that game and you'll be set forever. Um, I certainly with the with the Bethesda side, I'm more familiar with the Fallout series. Uh, mm -hmm. Although I, you know, I played some Elden Ring or Eld Elden Elden Ring. Fuck, I'm looking like a, we're looking like fucking assholes here. <laughs> just turn it off. <laughs> All right, we'll turn it off. I played. <laughs> I played Skyrim to, to to the end of Skyrim. Elder Scrolls. That's what I was trying to say. Elder Scrolls. Thank you. I finished you, you finished it. Skyrim. Yeah. So there was a uh, a year that was my, I was going to uh, Paris for the first time in my life, right? Maybe. And I'd saved up a bunch of money, and Skyrim had just come out. Whatever year that that was, where Skyrim hit like the 360. Yeah. And I had the idea that I would change my clock around while I was here in Los Angeles. So I got sunlight. Sun lamps. Have I told this story in the podcast I don't think before? So. I don't remember. I got sun lamps and put them all around the couch and blasted sun lamps at myself while I played Skyrim because everybody was asleep. And I would change my clock until I was going to bed at like 10 in the morning. Wow. Uh, and that's how I played and, and, and finished Skyrim. It was an um, unenjoyable experience <laughs> and I felt like I was going crazy. <laughs> Truly wild. Uh, the chat, by the way, is uh, is is spamming that 2011 is when Skyrim originally released, although it has been re-released endlessly. Yeah, that makes sense. No, yeah, like November 2011 is is uh, when I went to Paris for the first time. I think 11, 11, 11. Mm. Never get a release date like that again. I think you might. No, you can't. How? That I mean, that predate that post dated 9/11. What? That's not what I meant. Oh, what did you mean? <laughs> I meant like. Oh, just because we're not going to hear the year eleven for a another yeah, century. Yeah, we're not going to be. A... <laughs> You're yeah, I don't want to hear it again. Nine eleven. I thought that's what you were referencing. Wow. Well, <laughs> should we get to the regular part of the show? But to Heather's point, we're never going to have another nine eleven again. You're right. That's not true. I didn't say that either. I, I'm agnostic on 9/11s in the future. <laughs> is that the big? What, what are the biggest? Because the one I always think of is 9999, the U.S. Dreamcast release, is like the big video game day. Yeah. Yeah. The last one was 12, 12, 12, probably, and then that's it. We're done for a while. Yep. Beatles Rock Band 9909909 from Fox Murder. Mario movie the is releasing on three three thirty three. Wait a minute, that's I not that's, that's wait, that's you're, wait, you're full of shit. <laughs> that's a lie. <laughs> if you put something in the chat, I will read it. 
and I may read it aloud <laughs> before thinking about what oh, it means. No. So Nick's got Ron Burgundy syndrome. <laughs> I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> yeah, that's so epic. Uh, okay, let's style. Let's let's fucking get into the year in review crew. So it is the premiere night of the premiere gaming podcast, the Get Played Game of the Spectacular Year Awards, the Goatsies. Wow! And we are handing out trophies in an array of categories. So we're just going to speed through them. And you know what? I think I'll go first. All right. The first category is best turtle in a video game. Best oh. turtle in a video game. And the nominees, and the nominees are, are Donatello from Shredder's Revenge. Leonardo from Shredder's Revenge. <laughs> no. Michelangelo from Shredder's Revenge. And Raphael from Shredder's Revenge. And the winner of the Goatsy for Best Turtle is the Turtle Pope from Elden Ring. Let's fucking go. This is Turtle Pope's first win for a goatsy. It is my honor to accept this award <laughs> here at the Church of Vows. The lands between have been ruined by the shattering. So this is a bright ray of shun sunshine and otherwise bleak reality. I want to thank my, thank my lawyer, uh, Lev Ginsberg. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> that's uh that's our first category of the night. We got a, another category right here right away. Mm, this category is best protagonist I chose in Fortnite. And oh. the nominees are Kylo Ren, The Xenomorph, mm. Spider Knight, RoboCop. And the winner is Naruto with an R2-D2 backpack and a Rick and Morty glider using Assassin's Creed emotes. <laughs> this is Naruto with all that stuff's first win at the Goatsies. Wow, everybody! I'm so happy to have won for best protagonist Heather Chose in Fortnite. Uh, I'm, I'm just covered in shit. I got shit all over me. I, I'm playing... Ugh. I'm playing uh, Ariana Grande songs and dancing, and I'm, I've got fucking Rick and Morty pickles. I'm just I'm just covered in shit. I'm uh, I'm like that. What's that book? Heather said that before. Ready Player One. I'm just like that. Believe it. Is wow. that book like that? I think it is. Yeah. It is. Ugh. Wait, do I have it? Because it would be great to read a, a, I don't think I have it. Why would I have that book? Here, let me let me pull up, vamp for a second while I pull up, a, a, a excerpt from Ready Player One. Boy, okay. these days when I vamp for a second, I boot up Vampire Survivors. <sighs> hey, let me vamp for a second. I'll play a little Vampire Survivors. That'll pass the time. Nick. I was about to make the same fucking joke. I got 30 minutes to kill. Let me vamp by playing Vampire Survivors. Hey, I'll uh, vamp for a second. Uh-huh. Uh, get that garlic away from me. Stuff will uh, tell you. So, so here's, a, here's a, real, a real excerpt from Ready Player One, the book. I made a big entrance when I arrived in my flying DeLorean, which I obtained from completing a Back to the Future quest on the planet Zemeckis. The DeLorean came outfitted with a flux capacitor, but it made several additions to its equipment and appearance. First, I installed an artificially intelligent on onboard computer named Kit, purchased in an online auction into the dashboard, along with a matching red Knight Rider scanner right above the DeLorean's grill. Then I outfitted the car with an oscillation overthruster, a device that allowed to travel through solid matter. Finally, to complete my 80s super vehicle theme, I slapped a Ghostbusters logo on each of the DeLorean's gullwing doors, then added personalized plates that read Ecto-88. That's a full paragraph from the book. That's really good. That's just good That's stuff. really good. It's good. Everything is good. American culture is good. <laughs> <laughs> so so when I'm like, 
Fortnite is just Ready Player One. And then I say, for all all reality, I play as Naruto with an R2-D2 backpack, a Rick and Morty glider using Assassin's Creed emotes. That's the same thing. Yeah. I get you. I follow your logic. That's better, though, to me. <laughs> is for it? For some reason. <laughs> I don't think so. It, I guess it's because I didn't have to hear all that. I got gotcha. you. I could just see it and be like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, guys, would you believe it if I told you it's time for yet another award? Wow. Wow. And, you know, I know that people are sort of out on award shows because they're self-congratulatory and all that. And this one's no exception. This award goes to is for best theme month, best theme month of our show specifically. Wow! Wow! Uh, and uh, the nominees are Hideo Kojember. Good month. October. A lot of fun. Good month. And Poke May. And the winner of the first ever best theme month award. It's Poke May. Wow. Wow. And it's not just because I came up with it and I made the award category. <laughs> and it also, just on record, had the fewest complaints. <laughs> of anything we've ever done on the show, yeah. ever. Nobody complained. Everybody loved it. Overwhelmingly lo beloved. U Universal acclaim was the re response. Yes. I didn't see a single email from any adult babies. <laughs> Overwhelmingly positive, it would say yes. in the Steam store. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was great. It was, uh, yeah, very well received. Um, and I guess, I guess I'll accept the award. Wow. Congratulations, Matt. Hey, thanks so much. This is Matt Apodaca's first win at the Goatsies. <laughs> Not my last, bitch. <laughs> he judges it, so it's perhaps a little corrupt. But we'll allow it. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's get to the next award here at the Goatsies. All right. Here we go. Boom! You got Luigi'd! Oh, my. <laughs> that, honestly. You just got luigi chat. You said you were going to do it. Uh-huh. I forgot. And I knew that at some point it was going to happen. I, I didn't think it was going to be right now. People are typing like, fuck you, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> You're all sick, they're saying. <laughs> Worst day of my life. Yeah, you guys got luigi <clears throat> Yeah, and you know what? It's not going to happen again. No, it won't happen again. Uh, no, but the actual award is. And Matt, Matt, since you just gave a personal one, I'm going to give a personal one, too. Wow. This is best boring ass, wiger ass, barely interactive book disguised as a game. The nominees are <laughs> The Forgotten City, a time loop game set in ancient Rome. Immortality, a game where you literally scrub through video clips. Norco, which we covered on the podcast. And Road Warden, a mostly text based RPG. And the winner is Pentiment. Wow. Pentiment, a game set in 16th century Bavaria <laughs> where you walk around a monastery. Accepting the award for Pentiment is Weiger's Wife. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know why he chooses to do that instead of spend time with me. <laughs> <laughs> like there are video games you can actually like have fun with if it was a fun game I'd understand that but when it's just like <laughs> hey you're just reading text on a screen like I just I I just don't understand it and that's wow congratulations congratulations mm -hmm. to uh, Pentiment for being boring as shit and also a game that I absolutely like a lot <laughs> yeah and sorry to your wife <laughs> <laughs> doing the show live on twitch is really fun because i feel like there are just more opportunities to mug you don't really get to mug when you do the no you can't audio you know you can but like who's it for 
By the way, I am not my own wife. The chat is the chat is now saying that, that Weiger's wife is like a, a a fiction that exists inside my own head. It's like a different yeah. personality of mine. No, I have an actual wife. I'm just doing positive. Your voice. I'm positive he's lying. Yeah. <laughs> I've met I've met Nick's wife, and I believe it. So so have I. It's like an elaborate Muppet, though. I know it now. Yeah. It's like some kind of like mocap thing that Nick Nick's is always doing. wearing lipstick on half of his face. <laughs> I've heard if you go to like a if you go to see Sesame Street, like the the studio, that um, uh, Snuffleupagus is just like held on wires up in the scaffolding. Is that true? I've heard I've heard similarly, and I've yeah. heard that they've started to, or you know, not they just started doing this, but. Um, in the age of people going to like the Henson studio uh, like lot and like taking tours, instead of having the Muppets and stuff out, they have them in like a big bed asleep because oh, when they're better. out, they look dead. Yeah. I, so when I was at SNL, Cookie Monster came to do a bit Yeah, and it was actual Cookie Monster and he was doing a bit and you know, even though the, the puppeteer is there, the Muppeteer it you you talk when you talk you can't help but look at cookie monster yes. and we we run through the bit a couple of times and then it was like great and the muppeteer took cookie monster off and just threw him onto a chair oh <laughs> god and everybody went oh no because <laughs> <laughs> this thing that had been alive in front of all of us just suddenly yeah. was a corpse <laughs> it was, there was so a, horrible I there was that. a I, I went, this is before I knew you, Nick. I went to, uh, I'm good friends with our friend, Ify Wadiwe, mm -hmm. and he took me to a taping of that of At Midnight, where Fozzie Bear was a Oh, guest. that's right, that's right. Wow. And um, all the other writers brought their children. Yeah. <laughs> and Ify, who has a child, brought his adult friend. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Shout out, shout out to Ify, who also hooked me up with a, a Fortnite Ralph Lauren shirt. I found out from our Discord. Ralph he's Lauren. The best. Yeah. Ralph All right. Lauren, so Ralph Lauren, he's this, the best. I love this him. Is another category wow. here on the the Goat Seas. It's best game I didn't play. Oh. The nominees include God of War, Gears of War, Warhammer. Crisis Core Final Fantasy 7. And the winner is Hogwarts Legacy, which wow. I will never fucking play. Wow. Hell yeah. Feel bad for those That's developers. It. Me too. So do I. I feel bad for everybody involved in the wizarding world. Yeah. Because there are, I think, I, I mean, if you took a job with the wizarding world now, you might be like, ugh. But I think there's a lot of legacy hires right. like involved in the staff of, of mm -hmm. all of those productions, the movies, the games, all of it. And just to be attached to such a toxic fucking brand now. Woof. Yeah. Uh, also, weirdly, nobody from Hogwarts Legacy showed up to accept their award. Uh, so we will be donating it to a charity of our choice. Wow. Yeah. Real bummer, real bummer, because it looks great. Looks, looks like cool. a cool game. And cool if world. none of this had ever happened, I would have fucking played it. Yeah. I'd have been like, holy shit, I'm running around to Slytherin, doing Avada Kedavra or whatever the fuck that, just yeah, killing NPCs. It would have been great. Hey, you know why we're, uh, well, we're a, a down, stop down a little bit and dealing with somber territory. I think it's maybe a good time to take a look back on, some of the video game characters <clears throat> we've lost over the past year. It's the Goatsies in memoriam. In the arms of Tim the Toolman the Taylor from Home Improvement Power Tool Pursuit. Killed by a mech for some reason. All of the merchants in Elden Ring. They know why. Harrier Dubois from Disco Elysium. Gave himself a heart attack thinking about his ex-wife. 
the <laughs> residents of my Animal Crossing island. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I could assume. Digitally de-aged Jeff Bridges from Tron Legacy. <laughs> Killed by a speeding light cycle. In the eyes of the angel. My tarnished player character in Elden Ring. 9,764 times. Everyone's favorite characters from cyberpunk edge runners, slaughtered in the most brutal fashion imaginable. <laughs> the battery in my play date, when I remember I have that. <laughs> Literally 100,000 enemies and vampire survivors, because that unlocks an achievement. Colt from Deathloop. Colt from Deathloop. Colt from Deathloop. <laughs> wow. Some comfort here. Heather's patience <laughs> with us. <laughs> wow. That's uh Oh, am I saying in the air? Are you no, I think I would more? Do, done. I don't have any more. do you have any more no. mouth? No, uh, I I didn't want to put it in the in the joke one, uh, but the real voice actor of Leisure Suit Larry did pass away this year. Uh, Jan Rabson, so shout out to shout out to Jan uh, for for your work yeah. uh, as Leisure Suit Larry. Yeah, God bless. Yep. Uh, okay, let's. Uh, do we have any other categories? I have I mean, a category, and wow. this is oh, okay. a crazy one. Do it. Okay, so this 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 is the this category. Best game with a side quest about reuniting two jellyfish. Wow. And the wow. nominees are... <laughs> multiple nominees. Elden Ring. <laughs> God of War Ragnarok. <laughs> what? <laughs> and the winner is... <laughs> it's a tie. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> and that's not a spoiler. Are... It's a side quest. You don't have to do it. It's completely missable. Um, but there are floating wow. jellyfish in the new Fortnite too. It's like uh zeitgeisty to have like fucking jellyfish floating around in your game. Yeah, jellyfish are having a bit of a moment right now. It's I, it's amazing when something like that happens, different medium, but but there are two prestige movies this year that were specifically Mahler's Fifth Symphony factors in not just as like a sound cue, but as part of the plot. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I won't say which movies they are because that might seem as something of a spoiler, but you can probably at least infer about one of them. Well, I think we're just about wrapped up with categories here, Matt. I mean, unless you've got any others. By the way, when you say a category, is it a matagory? Uh, that's actually really good. Okay. That's funny. Um, yeah, it is funny. That is, it's funny. We agree. It's funny. Um, you could also even call it a category because, as you'll see behind me, there's a cat on my couch. Oh, look at that guy. Very cute. Meowing and purring away. Yeah. No idea that they're on Twitch. No idea what Twitch is. Do you think no I should idea what a video game is? Oh, yeah. Go ahead and ask. Hey, Hurley, is it okay that you're on Twitch? Oh, Sawyer's there, too. Wow. He's, like, he's, he's right. Wow. It's a comfy day for the for the boys. Um, you have two lost cats. Not they're yeah. not lost. No, but they are named after lost characters. That's right. Yeah, big lost fan. Wow, love the show. Rewatched it uh, last year. It's my favorite. It's maybe my favorite TV show ever. I love it. I think I I think I mentioned I just saw the final episode of Lost. That's, yeah, that's, I've seen the pilot in the final episode. That's I'm I'm mad hearing it again. <laughs> Because, you know, it is like it is one thing where it's like it's hard to say, oh, you should watch this show yes. that has like 90 episodes. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's right, like hard right. to say that to somebody. Um, but it's a good show. I, I, and I think based on some of the things that you like, I think you might enjoy it. Um, Yeah. I, I, I Here's the thing. Like I like a mystery. I like I'm down for like a puzzle box. But when I know that it's plummeting towards some sort of unsatisfactory conclusion, when I know in advance it doesn't quite stick the landing. That mm -hmm. to me is going to make me a little bit less invested. And see, and this is where that to turn this show into a lost podcast. But I think the show does stick the landing. It certainly didn't. Wow. It didn't think it was doing that. Uh -oh. oh, my God. It's power from Chainsaw Man. Power. Hey, it's me, power. And it's time for power up. 
video, the segment where I don't lie about anything that happened. Wow. And it's time for 2022 in gaming. Wow. Fuck you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I watched, I watched Nikki eat poop. I watched him do it. Okay. That's not true. All right, so it's true. That's I watched him. Matt was feeding him. Okay, let's <laughs> like, talk okay, about no, what. I don't be involved. Huh? 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 What? Who? All right, let's talk so about let's talk about the year in gaming. This is Power Up. In January, Assassin's Creed Christ in the Shadows was released, exclusive to the 3DS, <laughs> where you play as Jesus the Assassin trying to murder the cross before it kills you. Big hit in gaming. <laughs> Pokemon Phone and Beeper came out. It was perfect. There were no bugs. Controversial new play mechanic where you kill NPCs in front of their families. Batman was announced. <laughs> he's real and he's a playable sandwich. <laughs> Elden Ring was released as DLC for Rainbow Six featuring <laughs> the Elden Lord, Bernie's Adam Sandler's. <laughs> Horizon Forbidden West featured a new heroine. Just heroin. It's a needle. You play as a needle oh, no. and you run around and you give people a heroin. Cyberpunk 2077 came true. It came Mario true. Paint. How? It came true. Mario Paint was re-released as a subscription service by Adobe in Jam Utember. I mean, that and could then, happen. And then finally... And it would be good. Nintendo announced that the N in N64 stands for nipples. The official name of the system is <laughs> Nipple 64. <laughs> Fuck you! This wow. has been Power Up! Wow, thanks, Power. Uh, that reminds me, I one time had, like, this is years ago, I had a, a, a tweet where I was like, the DS and Nintendo DS stands for dick suck. The idea was that playing it was as fun as getting your dick sucked. And then uh, the 3DS, three dick sucks. That was basically the tweet. And someone running the Nordstrom corporate account retweeted it by like by accident. <laughs> <laughs> and so the prize was like, why the fuck did Nordstrom retweet this? <laughs> uh Thank you. That was that was that was great. Uh, power. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, to Power, for for joining the show. I um, can't believe I Heather, missed it. Heather is back. Uh, I think we need to get the show back on track real quick. So uh, you got Luigi again. Oh, Nick. that's not on track, Nick. Nick, you said you said one time, and this is uh, guys. This is exactly why I said that we shouldn't do this because as soon as, soon as Nick gets a Luigi button, <laughs> it's fucking game over. He's gonna be doing it nonstop. <laughs> This guy. <laughs> it's sick. It's sick. People are and so mad. <laughs> yeah, I would be furious. The fact that they're even watching this now is still, it's, it's baffling to me because we, we, we betrayed their trust. Yeah, it's true. All right, sorry about that. I won't do it again. Um, okay, do we have any other, any other categories before we get to the real ones? <laughs> these Wait, are real. Th I know real? these are real, but before we Wait, get to the what? other real ones. Wait, hold on. Uh, were we supposed to prepare other stuff? I have some other stuff, but we'll just talk through it. Okay, yeah. great. Okay, great. Great. Uh, first category, and I think this is one that we should just, we, we can, I, I think we'll all agree on this one. But worst game we played for the podcast this year. I think it has to be Mighty Number no. 9. Just in terms so of, too. it Oof. was so unfun. It was such a joyless exercise. And also, like... We we didn't play as many bad games this year because just because of the, the the different format, but like it's there's an there's an element of like this is like was like promised to be something that could be fun. It's a genre and a format that can be fun, and it just completely un under delivers on every aspect. I disagree. You disagree. I disagree. It was Leisure Suit Larry that the fucking wow. Worst Leisure Suit Larry was the worst in Rest October. In I'd ra I'd rather replay Leisure Suit Larry. No I fucking way. Finished no Leisure way. Suit Larry. Yeah. Not. I did not finish Mighty Number no. Nine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Chad is mentioning. No. Chad is pointing out, by the way, and I talked to Brett about this. Uh, Brett Morris, 
uh, loves the new Leisure Suit Larry. Like he is, he thinks Leisure Suit Larry yeah. dreams don't or don't try and see, is good. That to me is absolutely baffling and shocking. <laughs> um, because it's like, well, the thing about that one too is that it's not. It's I, I to me it wasn't bad compared to like what you were saying, Nick. Like, uh, Mighty Number no. Nine is pretty joyless. Like, what are the other bad games we played? We played Top Gun, mm -hmm. which was like. Bad, but like interesting. It's like a playable yep. NES game. That's yeah, you know, it's it's like it's it's dated, but it's okay. And even the um, the home improvement game is like stupid and bad. Yeah, it's more nonsense than anything. But it's funny that it's real. Yes. No, I'd rather play more of that than play Mighty Number no. Nine. Yeah. No, I would rather play Mighty Number no. Nine. And unlock every unlockable than to ever play <laughs> any part of Leisure Suit Larry Balan... ever f uh, fucking again. Balan Wonderworld wasn't this year. That was the end of last no, year. No, that's the end right? of last year. Those are the last episodes. Yeah. And I would play year. Balan. I would play fucking I'd Balan. I'd rather play that for sure. Yeah. Uh, all right. Fuck. Next category. We all have physical copies of Balan Wonderworld or whatever it's called. It's due. Mine's within arm's reach. <laughs> I like what you've done with your uh, I ain't office lying. there. Holy wow. shit. Wow. There we go. For PS5. He just produced Balan Wonderworld on on camera from uh, Yuji Naka, who was recently arrested. Oh, yeah. We never <laughs> talked about that. For insider <laughs> trading. Never, we'll see. We never fucking yeah. talked about it, but somehow that dude who made Balan and Sonic was arrested for insider trading in Japan. He's fucking set up. Yeah. It was a fucking sting operation. Yeah. Oof. It's framed. Uh, okay. Next category, best game we played for the podcast. Now, look, Elden Ring we're going to play anyway. Elden Ring's an all-timer. We're very, very lucky to live in this year in which Elden Ring was released. And I'm going to say for our purposes, I don't think that's the winner. I think no. it should be either Disco Elysium, which we all played and had a very fun discussion about. That was or, this year? That yeah. was this year. That was the first We Play You Play was Disco Elysium this year, amazingly. Um, or I was going to pitch Pokemon Gold Silver, which wow. was also just a really cool experience to play that game, uh, and see how well it held held up. I but uh, other nominees are, are are available. You know, there's other, a lot of games we played this year. I'd, I'd, I'd yeah. of course nominate Fortnite because it has completely right. dominated the second or final quarter of my gaming existence, but. Fortnite does not hold a candle to Disco Elysium. Wow. Disco yeah. is so fucking good. I, yeah, and I know we talk about it a lot, but it's because wow. it's, it's important. It's a impactful game. Uh, Disco, yeah, Disco Elysium uh, for me, but also I really loved playing Sonic the Hedgehog 2 this year. I'd never played it before. Hey, that's a great game. That, so that's that was a great like game. A, that was so fun to me uh, and felt cool that I got to not only – play it but complete it we should legit play sonic frontiers for the show i was thinking about that i was looking for an excuse to play sonic frontiers so yeah. if we make it into content i can justify it okay let's, let's make do it, it into content okay, let's we'll do, do it sonic frontiers. we just we we say we're gonna play games on the show like we just it's a thing we say let's <laughs> okay. just do it <laughs> let's do it all right well, well we'll go with disco elysium uh next up best gaming moment of the year and I think this is maybe a place where I think we could get Fortnite in there because I think all three of us playing Fortnite together that was, was a hoot. That was, a that lot was the most great. fun I've had all year. Yeah, all right, I okay. loved it. That was so good. I wrote yeah. it down too. I was like, that was that was so great to me. And then also when Heather and I would team up in Elden Ring and take down fucking uh, dragons and shit. That was no, so fun. My. My gaming moment of the year is when I accidentally invaded Apodaca <laughs> while waiting for Apodaca and almost killed him before realizing what I was doing and ran away. Yeah, I was. Um... And then he fucking backstabbed me, and I was just on the, yeah. on my couch screaming, "Matt, Matt, Matt!" It's me. <laughs> I was legit scared. <laughs> that was so fun. That was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Those are the days. Oh. Uh, does anyone good... have, an, have a pitch for best podcast moment? Best moment from the show? Because um, my, my, I'm not a fan of the show, so I was struggling oh, with this one. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, I well, it's not necessarily like 
of the, well, it's of the show, but it's not like something that happened on the show. Really, yeah. it's more like when we got to go to Heather's and play with the Virtual Boy. That was really, really <laughs> a lot of fun. That was even though that it was fun. the Virtual Boy. Um, and then by the same token, even though it's not for this show, it's for Forget Animated. But when we got together and we watched um, End of Evangelion, and then went to the, the studio and recorded oh, yeah. that in person together, that was so fun. That, that was, was really, fun. really great. Yeah. We 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 had a mo- a private movie theater for the end of yeah. Evangelion. It's the first time I saw it in a movie theater. It was amazing. Wow. Uh, Chad is mm-hmm. shouting out a lot of uh, he- uh, Heather characters. Uh, the uh, Ash Ketchum, uh, the mm-hmm. Resident Evil Merchant. Yeah. Um, how, how about something that Nick and I do? Let's see. <laughs> uh, that'd be nice to see here. Uh, hmm, I don't know about that kind of worms. Huh, interesting. Uh, uh. I think the hardest I got you guys to break is when. What was it that I said when the oh when the when the uh, merchant came back and said I've hit a new low? Oh, I hit a new <laughs> low. Is really good. Spit yeah. take. <laughs> was your mom on the show this year or last year? I think that was last year. Last Man, year. What the heck? Yeah, last year. Was uh this is I mean, it's been a real for a year that seems to have flown by when you actually think about the chain of moments that created the year there's so many links in that chain mm-hmm. it's a real it's been a really good year i can't believe virtual boy was this year i can't believe disco was this year it doesn't seem like it was but it was like wow. i guess 11 months ago you know what a ride uh, all right i guess that brings us to our personal games of the year i think the, i think the podcast game of the year i think collectively we talked about it and we're just we're it's just it's the year of elden ring i mean we're very very blessed to be alive at a, a year in which one of the greatest games of all time was released and uh we all got to experience it and talk about yeah. it and fucking so i i i thought what we do is we'd say we kind of give like an elden ring plus our personal top fives. So, you know, Elden Ring is the number one slot and then anything else you want to throw in there or however many you want to do. Uh, I've got five and I'll go first. Mine would be, after Elden Ring, Vampire, in order, Vampire Survivors, The Case of the Golden Idol, Citizen Sleeper, which I talked about on the pod uh, earlier this year and has absolutely lingered in my memory. Had some DLC as well. Uh, Marvel Snap, uh, which was a late arrival, and then for my final slot, I struggled between a few different action games, but I settled on Cuphead, the delicious last course, which has, of course, the delicious wow. Ms. Chalice. Wow. But just a oh. wonderful, wonderful bit of DLC for Cuphead um, wow. and just a incomparable aesthetically. So those that's, are my picks. That's good. That's yeah. really good. Um, Heather, do you want to go or do you want me to go? Why don't you go? Okay. Um I'm going to go the yeah after Elden Ring obviously I'm not done with it yet but God of War Ragnarok is like it's shaping up to be one of the great games of all time it's so good um for me next would be Pokemon Legends Arceus I really loved that that game and wished uh I, that more of it was present in Scarlet and Violet even though I haven't spent that much more time with Scarlet and Violet I'll be getting that to that uh pretty soon Vampire Survivors yes Let's fucking go, Vampire Survivors. This one may be controversial because it's a remaster, um, but I really loved playing The Last of Us Part 1 on PS5. I'll allow it. I, I loved it. It was so great. I had so much fun um, just revisiting uh, that game and just had, had a blast with that. And then my final pick was a game that no one else that I know has played um cuz it's all it's uh, it's available on the boutique system the playdate and it's called bloom and mm. it's fantastic as i i loved bloom so much i think about bloom all the time uh if you have a playdate check it out it's it's wonderful <clears throat> i got to i got to fucking s- play that game cuz you've been talking about talking it up is it's it so worth good. getting a, a playdate for it's why well, not just it, borrow it yeah i could just let you borrow it is it worth borrowing matt's playdate Yes. yes. Okay, great. Because it's like, it. it's not proprietary with the play date. I paid to download the file to load it onto my um, uh, play date. It's wow. really, really great. Wow. Very cool. Good list. Yeah. My list is going to be Elden Ring, of course. Uh, then Live Alive or Live Alive or whatever. I think it's yeah. Live was... Alive, which I really like. I, I thought about that as well, but I didn't end up um, it. 
The Last of Us Part One, which I got to play with Mary, who had never played it before, and uh, she really enjoyed it. And it was neat watching her play the entire game. Um, and then I want to give a shout out to hardware since I am, uh, I, since I live in this hole. Uh, and the two hardware things I want to shout out are um, the Steam Deck, which is yes. an incredible system. And also the Analog Pocket, which I also think came out this year, but I'm not certain. Uh, but regardless of whether or not it came out this year, it is time for a surprise Weiger Christmas here on the show. That's right. Because Weiger knows that he's getting a gift from uh, from Matt and I. I forgot about but this. But he doesn't know what it is. And so here it is. It's your very own analog pocket. Wow, look at that. And the dock, wow. so you can play it on whatever wow. uh, whatever your fucking HDMI uh, TV is. I was like, should I get an analog pocket? And you're like, yeah, you fucking should. This one. Yeah. Wow. What a gift. Thank you so much. Merry you're welcome. Christmas. Wow. Merry, Merry Weigermas. <laughs> <laughs> also, Usually St. Nick is giving out the presents. This uh, year he's getting them? <laughs> it's true. Uh, Fort. Fortnite chapter whatever four whatever the ch new chapter is that is that's one of my games of the year didn't want to forget it shout out to to <laughs> to Fortnite my, to Fortnite <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to write everyone's down so I could put it on screen but I think I I fucked it up I was I was getting too fancy with my hmm. uh it, it, with my uh, my Twitch in here um what was fancy your was your Nick did you Liger. have after Vampire Survivors and before Bloom you had Last of Us Part One right Matt yes. That's right. Uh, Last of Us Part One, Bloom, uh, Ragnarok. Um, I don't know why I'm doing this. This is for nobody. This is just for me. I shouldn't be doing this. Waste Pokemon Legends time. Arceus. Uh, yeah, I got that. And then, um, and Heather, yours were Elden Ring. Um, what was your set? What was your number two? Live, live, live alive. alive. That's right. Live alive. Fortnite's new chapter. Uh, does Disco count? Did Disco come out theoretically this year? No, no, it came um, out. Uh, I think in twenty nineteen originally. <clears throat> Disco doesn't count. Um, Disco's and dead, then I baby. said the Steam Deck and the Analog Pocket were my my final two. And you whatever, had the Last of Us category. Part One as well. Oh, Last of Us Part One. Yep. This is so not worth it. Um, but I'm doing it because I'm being stubborn. What are you doing? I'm, gonna, I'm just I trying to put to, it on I'm screen. I'm pulling up the Twitch right now. Are I'm you going to put it on a power wig? I'm trying to put it on screen. Hold on. What? No, I, this is, again, it's so No, no, go ahead. It. No, it's not worth it. This is a waste it of is. everyone's time. No, it's fine. Do okay, whatever you on. need. Hold on, hold on. Wait, no, I got to do It's a waste else. of time for the listening audience, but <laughs> I'm sure that, because I'm not cutting The it. Twitch audience is loving it. <laughs> yeah. But if you're listening to this podcast, you missed out on our Twitch live stream. We had costumes. We had guests. We had uh, a full award ceremony. That's right. Yeah. Here at the end of the year. Very cool. I just got to do a Nick, little bit more. What are you doing? Here. What are I'm, we vamping? I'm getting this up. Uh, hold on. Here we go. There we go. I got everyone's lists up on screen. You do? Yeah. I mean, you guys can't see it, but oh. the, chat, <laughs> the chat can. <laughs> Weiger, well, Elden Ring, Vampire Survivors, Case of the Golden Idol, Citizen Sleeper, Marvel Snap, and the Cuphead DLC. Matt, uh, Elden Ring, God of War Ragnarok, um, Pokemon Legends Arceus, Vampire Survivors, Last of Us Part 1. And uh, Bloom and Heather, Elden Ring, Live Alive, Fortnite, Last of Us Part One, uh, and then I fuck that up because I oh, put shit. two fours. Oh shit! You know what I? You know what I want to put? Your number you, four. You, know you have two. Your number five is Steam Deck. Number six is Analog Pocket. I'll change that. Well, number. I want to put on another thing on my list. Okay, great. This Atari is Fifty. This is exciting because I get to update in real time. Where do you want to start? Atari Fifty. Uh, yeah, which four do you want? I don't know. Put it anywhere. <laughs> Fucking put it on the list. It was an incredible. I it, I thought it was a really, 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 really well made thing. All right, great. Uh, I'll put it as number four. Um, right after Nick, you're crazy. Elden Ring. This is too much. What is? I don't even know what he's looking at. I thought it'd be fancy to put some text on screen. I didn't even scale it right. It looks like I'm shit. gonna take a screenshot of this and send it to you, Heather, and then you Thank can see you. if this was worth it or not. <laughs> Put it in the chat, and then I'll. Also, you're gonna have to edit this part of the podcast down, I don't Matt, because it's. <laughs> no, I think this is good. <laughs> like if you were listening to this, you'd be like, well, you'd get in a car wreck, you'd fall asleep. 
<laughs> no different than the regular show. Uh, all right. Um, I don't remember. We 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 didn't do as we didn't decide in a segment, did we? No, but I thought we could take some questions from the chat. Yeah, here's what here's what I'd say. Oh, yeah. wow! Why don't we do Why don't we do a a a sort of a, mm. a pseudo question block slash we play you play for your games of 2022? And if anyone out there wants to, uh, anyone in the chat wants to chime in with any of their favorite games of the year, favorite gaming memories of the year, or just any questions you want us to field, uh, we'll go ahead and get into that now. Uh, chat is uh, is shouting out um, Mario Rabbids two. Game we didn't talk about Midnight Suns, which just came out. Xenoblade Chronicles game. Three, which oh, I loved yeah. and and walked away from because of something else in this show. Fuck, that game was so good. I gotta go. I gotta. Ah, uh. that's one of those games. I feel like if I ever play it, I am going to like love it, and I just need to find time to pay it. Um, yeah. Tunic, Tunic's being shouted out. Tunic, another one I miss. You know, I someone someone in the chat is asking. Uh, the Whipple's in the chat. Nick, Neon White, not a top fiver this year. So when I talked about there were three three options, I believe I said that for for the sixth slot where I ended up picking Cuphead. Uh, Neon White was one of those. But those th those three games came down to Cuphead, the delicious yeah. last course, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, which I really enjoyed and came out early enough in the year. I think a lot of people have forgotten about it. And Neon White, Neon White is fucking awesome. It's so good. I think I just sort of had to. I, I think I just sort of like like I think Cuphead DLC lingered in my memory a little bit more. And I think just and I also feel like the story for Neon White didn't quite like it was trying a lot. And I feel like it didn't quite land. It didn't quite conclude in a way that I found as satisfying. But it is a fucking awesome game. The level design is really, really cool. Uh, mm. I'm seeing some some chat here uh, from uh, Make It Unclear. Shout out to Let Me Solo Her, best thing that happened of the year. That was fucking awesome. Lo yeah, Let Me Solo amazing. Her was great. That was incredible. Yeah. Uh, people that were was... shouting out Trombone Champ. That's another a very, very streamable game. Shredder's Revenge, you know, we talked about it on the podcast. Really fucking good. It's Shredder's Revenge was fucking awesome. It was an awesome version of 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 a of a way to do a retro game that just like you know, looks so perfect, looks so on point. Um, but then also has some modern quality of life improvements and gameplay improvements to make it a little bit more playable. So yeah, that's a that's a great one to shout yeah. out. Did Bowser's Fury come out this year? No, that God. can't be true. <laughs> that can't be true. Uh, Chad is mentioning Cult of the Lamb. That's another one. Cult of the Lamb was 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 fun. Uh, didn't make my list, but I but I enjoyed it and I appreciated the design. I think there'll be a really I gotta give that one a spin. I really good you sequel. Know, there's just so many games. Somebody says here, this is Dwight Plays Games. Mm -hmm. I played more AC Valhalla than Heather. How is wow. that possible? Yeah, it doesn't seem... You, Heather played all of it. I I really enjoyed that game. Was that this year? That was last year, right? I think it was last year for you, yeah. God, I don't even fucking know. I've it, been hearing it was a lot re about... released on PC today. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, I've been hearing a lot about... Uh, Signalis, I think it's pronounced. Yes, yeah. Uh, but it sounds scary to me. Yeah, it is, it's supposedly kind of a Silent Hill E. Mm, nope. But yeah. Also, people no, are nice. shouting out Bayonetta, which I haven't played. Yeah. Um, there's too many games. Get played. How does it get? Here's a, here's a Dame Dies a Lot. How does the ga Get Played crew feel about Stray as a GOTY nominee? Great question. Um, I think yeah. it might be if I was if I was making a top ten, it it might be in the top ten. Yeah. You know, of, of games I played, it is re it is a really cool design. It's a really cool world. I think it does a good job of making you feel like a cat. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, the, the art direction is fucking awesome. Yeah, so, I like the world. Hmm. Uh, I thought it was interesting. Uh, that was going to be one of my. I should have put that in the in memoriam actually. Uh, or whoops, never mind. Um, spoilers. Um, the cat's alive. Uh, I don't know what's happening. I'm I'm, like, <laughs> I'm freaking out now. Um. You know what game I played this year that I uh, that I wouldn't put as a game of the year, but w is worth mentioning is Sable. Hmm. Uh, oh. Sable is like a Breath of the Wild without fighting, uh, done in like a Mobius comic book st style. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it was recommended to me by my friend Olivia, and it's beautiful. It's really really great. I haven't gotten to dig into it, but I it just dabbling in it i was like fuck i bet this would have been a game that i really latched on to despite there being no combat although if there's fucking puzzles out there 
if it's just running around in the desert and like talking to people, I'm in. Yeah. But if I gotta like fucking like move a thing into a wall, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw my fucking controller at the screen. <laughs> uh, the so so someone is talking about uh, a few were mentioned on here. Uh, Horizon for uh, Forbidden West is that the new one? Yeah. Forbidden West was mentioned, which I didn't actually play, uh, but but My I heard good things about. Still sealed. <laughs> yeah, I gotta get it too because I played her. Uh, I played Zero Dawn this year and I loved it. Loved it. Uh, but it it was just too ambitious for me to do because I started playing it right before Elden Ring came out, Oof. and I was like, oh, I'll play this and then I'll play the new one, and then I just didn't know. Mm. I didn't know what Elden Ring was gonna do to me. The other thing that yeah. got, another game that got mentioned, a lot of people were talking to Return to Monkey Island. I did like Return to Monkey Island a lot. I thought that was a really you know good update of the 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 point and click graphic adventure formula. Uh, I did. I just it kind of lost me at the end, but you know I know some people were were okay with that ending. The the uh, a, a, another game that got mentioned was Eastward, which I believe just came to Game Pass, the game I've intrigued by. Um, mm. But yeah, that's one I've I, I've been looking to play as well. Uh, and you know what? What this all brings me towards is, I think I said this on the podcast earlier this year. I think this was an all-time year for games. I, I think, think we'll so. look back on 2022 and be like, the, all these fucking games came out. This was fucking. There's some amazing shit came out. It was. We were yeah. just for, far enough on the other side of of quarantine, and studios really figured out how that workflow and had enough time to kind of polish some 2021 games that maybe got delayed, and we ended up with this abundance of gaming experiences this year, and it'll be a while to actually catch up with everything that was worth playing. Yep. Yep. Banner yeah, year. Banner year. Imaginary Color said that. Bruce Banner year. It is a Bruce Banner year. Yeah. Hulk the Hulk smash, is coming maybe. to Fortnite. Is he really? Yeah. That's cool. He's well, already in Marvel here. Snap. Oh, yeah. Well, he would be there first. Yeah, he'd be there. All right. Well, is that anyway, the show, guys? I think that's the show. I think we'll we'll end it on this. <laughs> the energy <laughs> fading from all of us. The last bit of air is being let out of the balloon here. Uh, what what fun this was! Thank you, everyone, for for joining. Um, the chat. Thank thank you, thank you, the chat for being sweeties. Thank you all for being here. Uh, and, uh, oh, I guess we, did we not take any questions? Not, we didn't take any question, not a single question. <laughs> it was hard to, um, it was hard to get them because people were saying, mostly saying what games they liked. Yes. Yeah. I did. <laughs> I did see a question that I remember. I don't remember who said it. Now was it would it, be impossible for me to find is if Heather wait, is are we doing, excited are for, we, are we doing the question block? Oh Yeah. I think we said this was a question block slash Ding! we play, you play games of the year, but it ended up just being the, the latter. Yeah. Oh, wow. um, and now um, the chats are still coming through, so it is just like harder and harder as time goes on to find the questions. <laughs> Do you think they'll make a Chainsaw uh, Man game? Yes, I think they will, and I think it probably won't be very good. That's my guess. I, I I want it to be good. I would like it to be, like we said on the show, like a Devil May Cry style game. Yeah. Um, the, uh, there was a question way back there. Um, it, it was for Heather, but I think we could all answer this. Um, are we excited about the Coliseum update, the free Coliseum update for Elden Ring? I am. But I'm I'm getting an awful lot of combat in Fortnite. I know, but what if you could have the hardest <laughs> combat possible? Yeah. Yeah. We should at least sure. team up one time and see yeah, what oh, we can do. Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. Give them what for. Yeah. Um, I'm excited by by the prospect of it. I still have to finish Elden Ring, which I will do, but I'm playing Persona 5 Royal right now, so it has it's on the back burner. Uh the the someone asked what's the best game you played just because it was on Game Pass. And you know, I I ha I put Citizen Sleeper higher on my list. But I think I would have played. I I might have sought out Citizen Sleeper regardless. I really think the reason I got on Dependent was because it was just on Game Pass, and I think it's really cool that it's on. Like that's the kind of game that makes Game Pass like a you know like a like an amazing thing that exists that you can put this like weird like artisan like monastery game that's mostly reading, um and and it can find an audience through a subscription service. So that would probably be my guess. 
People are asking, uh, also asking uh, if I finished Sekiro. I haven't finished Sekiro yet, but I'm gonna do it. It was on my, it was on my. New I Year's did resolutions. see somebody. I saw somebody say this maybe on Discord or something. Like, uh -huh. what if Nick like finishes Elden Ring and then goes on like a no hit run on Sekiro <laughs> and just finishes it in a single setting? <laughs> Uh, people are uh, also mentioning Vampire Survivors is on Game Pass. Yeah, I mean, that's a good one. I think that I discovered it on Steam, uh, but for me, I'd probably... So for me, probably the answer is, is still Pentiment for this year. Yeah. And it's, it's only because it's on Game Pass, like, because it's an Xbox, like, game. Mm -hmm. I loved... The first game I played on Game Pass was uh, Gears of War 5. Oh, there you go. And I, I fucking loved it. I, I yeah. love it. And I thought I'd go back and play the other Gears of War games, and I... I haven't, uh, just simply because there are too many games. Um, but Gears of War Five is is great if you if you've never played it before. Um, I think about those guys all the time. I see a lot of questions about twenty twenty three predictions, and we'll be saving that for another episode. Yeah, we'll talk about that real soon. Yes, but uh, also some to... some questions about favorite scores of the year, favorite video game soundtracks of the year. I mean, a lot of great options. Neon White was shouted out earlier. That dis ha does have fantastic music. It's really, really yeah. good. The, the music in Atari Fifty, like we said last week, was great. Mm, very good. I mean, um, like 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 you know, I'll shout out Citizen Sleeper again. Just as just as a soundtrack, really connects with me, and it's one that I could you know that, that I listen to on uh, on Bandcamp. That. That Elden Ring opening theme is so fucking great. It's so it's fucking so yeah. fucking great. It's great. That's that's the track of the year. Yeah. Uh, I saw somebody say that the music in the game that Heather mentioned, Sable, uh, just by the artist uh, Japanese Breakfast, is very good. Uh, here's yeah. a question for me: Will the Mario movie outpace the Minion movie? I don't know if you mean in my esteem or at the box office. I think it's going to be tough to dethrone the Minions franchise, but Wario maybe has enough cachet as an IP that it'll just happen. Uh, but, man, I don't know. Minions are so fucking big. I could see it happening. I could see it being possibly being... I don't think it'll be bigger than every Despicable Me movie, but I think it'll be bigger than some some of the Despicable Me franchises. And I don't think I'll like it more than the, the, the DMs. Wow. This is a good question. I feel like I have talked with Devin about this. Uh-huh. Um, what was Devin's favorite composition for the show? Um, God, I know. Well, he does put a lot of work into those and, um, definitely has his favorites. Uh, gosh, I wish I had one off the memory, but sometimes we'll, when we're getting the episodes together, he'll message me and it was very like plainly be like, Matt. I snapped on this one. And I'll be like, yeah, you fucking did. It fucking rocks. <laughs> um, all right. Well, hey. Uh, Free Design 9. That's nice. That's a nice first time chat. We love you too, buddy. Uh and uh hey, what a what a lot of what a lot of fun this was. We would have yeah. Ooh, what a blast. Right? Thanks yeah. for it's, thanks for it, watching. What a blast. It is always hope. extremely stressful, but uh very satisfying to come onto Twitch and stream a podcast recording to you all live. And to answer a, a, a question that keeps coming up in the um, feed, yes, I will be streaming Fortnite. Um, I don't know, know when, but I will do it. That will be happening. Anyway. Check out this Twitch channel. Uh, and if you're listening to this in the podcast feed later, uh, twitch.tv slash getplayedpod. And uh, the VOD will also be up there if you want to watch that. Our music and engineering are, of course, by Devin Bryant. You can follow him on Twitter at BaffleGabs. And on Get Animated, we're talking Chainsaw Man. So check that out at patreon.com slash get played. And hey. You got played. You got played.